proceeding where we stopped. So we did the first one A. So now we are going to do B to E. And then F will do it later on on the upcoming video. So on for B, we are to show if B is a subset of C, then A cross B is a subset of A cross C for A not empty. First thing first, we'll have to assume that B is a subset of C and we'll let X be in A cross B, then we'll show that X is also in A cross C. And let a pair XY be an element of A cross B, then we'll have to show that a pair XY is also an element of A cross C. Suppose B is a subset of C, and let per XY be an element of A cross B. Now, a per XY being an element of A cross B means X is in A and Y is in B. By the Cartesian product definition or cross product definition. Since Y is in B and B is a subset of C, then Y is also in C. And so, a pair XY is in A cross C. And that's it for the proof. So, we assumed a pair XY is in A cross B. Then we have shown that a pair XY is in A cross C. Therefore, we can conclude. So, for B, a subset of C will imply A cross B is a subset of A cross C. Moving forward to part C. If A cross C is the same as B cross C and C is not empty, then A equals to B. So we'll assume A cross C is the same as B cross C. Then we'll have to let X to be an element of A. We show that X is in B. Similarly, we let X an element of B. We show that X is in A. That's when we conclude that A equals to B. Suppose A cross C is the same as B cross C and let X an element of A and also Y an element of C. Then a pair XY is an element of A cross C. Since A cross C is the same as B cross C and we already know that a pair XY is an element of A cross C then a pair XY is also an element of B cross C. And so X is in B and Y is in C. Hence X is in B. And therefore A is a subset of B. Since X an element of A implies X an element of B. Similarly, if X is an element of B and Y is an element of C, then a pair XY is in B cross C. And so a pair XY, it will be in A cross C since B cross C is the same as A cross C. So X an element of A and Y an element of C. And therefore B is a subset of A. Since if X is an element of B, it implies that X is an element of A. And this concludes the proof. A equals to B. Hence, A equals to B. So, that's it. Before doing part D, I'll leave this as an exercise. Let A, B, C, and D be set, prove if A is a subset of B and C is a subset of D, then A cross C is a subset of B cross D. So a hint, you're going to say, suppose A is a subset of B and C is a subset of D, and you're going to let a pair XY be in A cross C, your mission is to show that a pair XY is in B cross D. So try it out. Concerning part D, we have to show that A cross 
B minus C is the same as A cross B minus A cross C. So, to show that these two are equal, so we'll have to let a per x, y be in this. We'll also show a per x, y is here. And conversely, we'll let a per x, y be here. Then we show it's also here. So, let's begin. Let a per x, y be an element of A cross into B minus C. Then, x is in A and y is in B minus C. So, for y being in B minus C means y is in B and y is not in C. Hence, a pair x, y is in A cross B. Since x is in A and y is in B. But, a pair x, y, it won't be in A cross C. Since we know that y is not in C. Meaning, a pair x, y is actually in A cross B minus A cross C. And so, we can say A cross B minus C is a subset of A cross B minus A cross C. Conversely, we'll have to let a pair x, y be an element of A cross B minus A cross C. Then we show that a pair x, y is an element of A cross B minus C. Suppose a pair x, y is an element of A cross B minus A cross C. Then a pair x, y is in A cross B and a pair x, y is not in A cross C. Since a pair x, y is in A cross B, then x is in A and y is in B. And we know that a pair x, y is not in A cross C. So y is not in C because we already know that x is in A. The only reason that this is not in A cross C is that y is not in C. So that's why we say we'll say but y is not in C. So if y is not in C, why it will be in B minus C? And we'll conclude that a pair x, y is indeed in A cross B minus C. So A cross B minus A cross C is also a subset of A cross B minus C. Therefore, the two sets are equal since they are the subset of each other. So, you see, it's all about understanding. So, in order for you to master those definitions, you'll have to practice. Because practice will help you unlock your mind and enables you to adapt to any situation. So, for part E, you must show that A minus B intersect C is the same as A minus B union A minus C. So this part from here to here is due to De Morgan's and distributive law. Because remember, this is not different from A intersect B intersect C complement. And B intersect C complement by De Morgan's law is the same as B complement or C complement. So by distributive law, we'll have A intersect B complement or A intersect C complement, which will be the same as A minus B union A minus C. So we'll have to show this. So the proof goes this way. Let x be an element of a minus b intersect c. Then x is in a and x is not in b intersect c. And so x is in the complement of b intersect c since it's not in b intersect c. It follows that x is in b complement 
O X is in C complement by D Morgan's law. Since X is in A and X is in B complement or X is in C complement, then X is in A minus B or X is in A minus C by the difference, definition and distributive law. Hence, X is an element of A minus B union A minus C. And this proves that A minus B intersects C is a subset of A minus B union A minus C. So, we have shown that if X is in A minus B intersect C, X will be in A minus B union a minus C. Conversely, let X be an element of A minus B union A minus C. Then X is in A minus B or X is in A minus C. So here we'll have to prove by cases. Case one, if X is in A minus B, will we get X being in A minus B intersect C? Case 2. If X is in A minus C, will we get X being in A minus B intersect C? The reason being with the union, we are not sure which set contain X, but what we are certain is that one of the set contain X. That's why we have to check for each and every case, especially in the union is very much important. So, if X is in A minus B, then X is in A and X is not in B. So, if it is not in B, it won't be in B intersect C. So, since X is not in B intersect C, but we know that X is in A, then X it will be in A minus B intersect C. So, we have shown for the first case, then for the second case, if X is in a minus C, then X is in A and X is not in C. And since X is not in C, it will not be in B intersect C. X is not in B intersect C, but it is in A. So it will be in A minus B intersect C. So, regardless of any of the two cases, if X is in A minus B union A minus C, X it will be in A minus B intersect C. And this proves that A minus B union A minus C is also a subset of A minus B intersect C. Therefore, a minus B union A minus C is a subset of A minus B intersect C. And hence, A minus B union A minus C is the same as A minus B intersect C.